going on everybody? Today I'm going to share with you the results of my National Homebrew Competition submissions. Uh, this was the first year that I decided to submit anything to any competition ever. Um, and like a complete idiot, I decided to go straight to the National Homebrew Competition. Basically what I want to do is just kind of show you guys what the BJCP judges thought of the beers that I submitted, um, which kind of is a good way to get a little bit more of an idea of, you know, how does my beer actually taste to, you know, somebody who's not me. I can be a little biased towards my beer and it's good to get to get somebody else's palate on it. So I'm gonna put the score sheets up on screen for you guys to kind of read along with me. Um, but for the sake of the judges' privacy, I'll be blurring out their details. Um, and good luck reading half of these because apparently BJCP judges have like doctor's level of handwriting. Uh, the way the competition works is a bit different than others. So there's usually four rounds of judging. Most beers actually get knocked out in that first round. If they go past that first round, then they go to second, third, and fourth rounds of judging. Your beer is put in a random flight of other beers from everybody else across the country. And at the first table, you get judged by two to four different judges. And they all taste your beer, kind of mull it over, talk about it, figure out what they want to rate it, and then it, they each will write their own individual comments and individual impressions of the beer. And then either it will get moved to the next round or eliminated from the competition. That happens over four total rounds of judging until you get your top three beers for each particular category of beer. Now, these are in the BJCP category, not the actual individual beer style. So, in my case, I submitted a whole bunch of different Belgian beers, however, three of them fell under the Belgian Strong Ale BJCP category. This being my first year actually going into the competition, I was kind of hoping to get like a numerical score in each beer, but I realized that apparently doesn't happen. The score sheets you get back uh, do not contain a numerical score. They are only ranked versus the other beers that the judges had in that flight. Plus, to boot, you only get the first round's worth of comment sheets back. You don't get anything from the second, third, or fourth rounds. Um, so these are all just the initial impressions out of the first table from the first judges. Remember too, with the BJCP, uh, you're actually trying to compete to have the best stylistically representative beer of that particular style. You're not necessarily trying to have the best tasting beer in the competition. So if you're making a damn good tasting Belgian triple that is slightly off style and like too sweet perhaps, or too spicy or you add spices to it and even though that might taste amazing it doesn't fit within the style it's not going to make it very far so you got to keep in mind that this is relative to the actual bjcp style guidelines uh, so in summary i submitted five different beers to the nhc uh, and I, for the sake of my wallet, am never doing that again. Uh, it was an incredibly expensive thing to ship, and uh, I think next year I'm probably gonna only do like two or three, but I am gonna do it next year. It's an overwhelmingly positive experience bringing back not only good comments, but also a medal this year. So I'm super proud to say that my Irish Stout was chosen as third best in the nation for <laughs> Irish Stout submitted this year uh, to the National Homebrew Competition, which is freaking awesome. So I submitted five beers to this competition. The Belgian Blonde, Belgian Triple, Belgian Quadruple, which is not on the channel yet, a Belgian Golden Strong Ale, and my Irish Stout. Everything except for the Irish Stout was actually bottle conditioned and primed by hand. Uh, the Irish Stout was counter pressure bottle filled off of the tap. So we'll start with the Blonde because that was actually the lowest scoring beer of them all. We'll start with judge number 273 here. This beer ranked two stars out of five um, and had relatively low aromatic properties. He says low aroma, inviting malt, sweet, light, spicy phenolic. He says thick rocky head, that's good. He says it's oxidized um, and had some dull flavors in it, which is interesting. That earned me a strike in the inappropriate to the style category. He says inviting aroma followed by some dull oxidized flavors. And he says you're serve young and fresh, uh, carefully handled. He also checked that there was very low carbonation in this, which is interesting because I bottle conditioned the, all of these Belgian beers to about three volumes of CO2. So I'm wondering if there was something in this particular bottle or maybe it just didn't end up actually getting capped properly or something happened in my packaging process that probably led to that low score and that oxidation character. So second judge on the Belgian Blonde said so this is about 2.5 stars. It is a spicy phenolic at medium to high intensity. This Pilsner malt plus a hint of toast, that's correct. Head color was beige in this case and then he says clumpy. Vienna-like malt notes, Belgian yeast character at moderate intensity. 
Interestingly enough, in, con in contrast to the previous judge, high to medium high carbonation on this one, um, but also showing astringency, which I find very interesting. He says balance issues are minor but evident, too much phenol and needs more carbonation. I'm not sure exactly where those phenols are coming from, but I do remember that that beer was fermented at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so if anything, that would create esters and not phenols. Um, but, you know, anything can happen in the bottle, and as Belgian beers age, they do tend to evolve quite a bit. Uh, and I've noticed that my triple became more phenolic over time. Uh, and we'll get to that. The two judges did agree on saying there's a lack of hop character um, and a sort of lack of uh, carbonation as well. So I'm wondering if there's something in my packaging regimen that needs to be fixed. All right, next one we're gonna move on to is the triple. So this one actually got three sheets back from. So we'll start with judge number 676. Um, did not rate it in the flight, uh, but does have some good comments here. He says he's getting perfumey alcohol and sugary sweetness. He says it's a bit dark for the style and a lasting head. Balance was on the hoppy side, which is interesting considering he said there's no hop character in this. He says tart, dry, I can't read that next word. He said there's some complexity. Warmth, medium high. Warmth is referring to how alcoholic does it feel. Um, that one really was interesting for me because when I drank this beer, it is 9% ABV. When I drank that beer, it was extremely drinkable and I didn't get a single bit of warmth out of it. So I'm wondering if maybe I'm just not picking up on that sort of thing normally or perhaps maybe it evolved in the bottle. So he says alcohol and astringency were a bit harsh. Would like more malt and sugar complexity. Um, that's, I mean, that's good feedback. I think it's very interesting that his experience was so different from mine um, when drinking this beer. Next on the triple we have judge number 103. Uh, judge number 103 rated this one three and a half stars out of the flights. Vanilla with a hint of orange, like a candied orange peel. That's, mu that's more of like what my experience was. Background of spicy phenols. This person said it's a glorious looking beer with a wonderful clarity and a delicate something head. Nice. They also said well balanced beer, orangey peppery spice, very low gravity. Um, I'm assuming she means final gravity, uh, but yes. Nothing is really checked as inappropriate on this sheet, and the overall comments are a lovely beer with the complex interplay of ingredients. Body is a touch thick. Consider the use of sugars if not already in plants. Um, so, interesting that that is the case because I did add almost 20% sugar to this grist. And then finally, judge number 105 for my triple has a four and a half star rating out of the flight. They liked this one. This judge said moderate to high phenols, moderate alcohol aromas and moderate esters. This one he says has a clumpy head. This person says well attenuated, balanced phenols and ester, malt flavors slightly dull. This one is saying uh, medium high carbonation. He did mark it inappropriate. Enjoyable triple with a phenol forward aroma and great attenuation. So what I'm getting away from this stack of papers is again, I'm wondering if there's some inconsistency in that bottling process. So what I did to bottle all of these Belgian beers was I primed them with a very specific amount of candy syrup and bottling yeast. So I used Lalaman CBC1 and I used about, I think it was three grams of candy sugar uh, per bottle. So I weighed each one out and painstakingly made sure it had the same amount of candy sugar in it. And I added in a diluted solution of yeast to bottle condition that beer with. They were all bottle conditioned for about a month prior to sending them out to NHC in the first place. So um, I'm wondering, maybe there was some inconsistency with that. It's entirely possible. Um, and that is one thing that will kill a beer's progression through the different tables. People did like this beer, I think quite a bit. Two out of the three sheets had quality beer, but other entries are better. No inappropriate things were checked. Um, he did say there were some dull malt flavors in there, which I find interesting, which could potentially indicate some oxidation. Um, and that oxidation comment was present on the blonde as well. So I'm wondering, maybe there's something I need to look at in my bottling process. When I bottled these beers, it did take a long time. And some of them were exposed to the environment for a good deal of time. Um, and it is entirely possible they could have been oxidized. Now we'll move on to the Belgian Golden Strong Ale. This one actually ended up having four comment sheets coming back with it, which is great because uh, that's a lot of good information to digest. So 
So he has Pilsner malt, ripe fruit esters, and I think he says moderate low esters. It looks like the word mash, but I'm, I'm not sure what that word is. Mixed size bubbles in the head. He, uh, for the flavor, we're looking at oxidized malt character. Again, peach and pear esters, uh, which are good things to have. He says presents as a solid golden strong that is past its prime with dull malt oxidation character. Maybe it is a little too old before moving to the competition. I don't know. So next, uh, the next judge, number 759. We have a three star out of five. So he says low sticky. I literally cannot read that line. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but he didn't rate anything as being particularly noticeable in the aroma. Uh, for the appearance of the beer, no comment. Uh, other than it being brilliant with a medium head. Um, for the flavor of the beer, low bready malt, spicy hops, finishes warm and hot. That's interesting. Um, that means we had some weird kind of fermentation character in there. Um, overall, this Belgian Golden Strong Ale was lacking fruity esters and was a bit too warm. Uh, point taken, not really glowing comments there. Um, I never really got any sort of warmth out of it, uh, but you know, the next time I crack into one of those bottles, I think I'm gonna look for it. Next one was judge number 670. He says, this is a heavy dough-like aroma from the malt, which is an inappropriate aroma. For the appearance of the beer, uh, he says, it is a pretty beer, like a hazy sunlight. That's almost poetic. For, for our flavor, comments here are some tartness in the finish. And then for overall, he says, lots of perfumey alcohol, would love some sugar complexity to temper or something. He wants some more sugar complexity. For a sugar complexity, maybe we want to add, instead of just using the colorless clear candy sugar, maybe I can add in a little bit of the golden candy sugar. Um, that could be kind of cool. The last one on the Golden Strong Ale, judge number 103. Uh, we have it as slightly over three stars in the entire flight. Very low grainy malt aroma, medium lemony note, low pear esters, low peppery phenols. For the appearance, slight haze, giant fluffy white head falls but doesn't disappear, great lacing. Flavor, fruity palm fruit, parentheses pear, and a bit of citrus. For overall, showcases the requisite yeast character and mouthfeel. Great balance, really well made. Only real detractor is a slight haze. So that goes again to show you that when you're submitting beers for a BJCP competition, keep in mind the BJCP style guidelines. This is a beer that is supposed to be brilliantly clear in the guidelines and I imagine if it had been when they poured it, it probably would not have uh, <laughs> had so many negative comments on it. Again, we're seeing some more trending towards oxidized malt character, which is very interesting, as well as inconsistent carbonation. Um, and this one also, there were some people that were a little upset about how much alcohol warmth there was, um, which is something that I don't necessarily pick up very frequently, but perhaps that is something to look into. I don't know if that is from the bottle conditioning yeast or if that is from the actual fermentation. Also considering that maybe this Golden Strong Ale was past its prime, maybe it actually was too aged to go into the competition. I let it sit in the bottles for about a month um, and maybe that had an impact on it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Belgian Dark Strong Ale that has yet to be on the channel. This I brewed in March and it's still aging in the basement, still waiting for the right time to come out, uh, which I think is gonna be when the weather gets a bit colder, but I'll still give you the comments. We have two comment sheets on this one. Uh, so, uh, first one here, judge number 569, gave it a three out of five stars. Um, we have overall low aroma, no fruity esters. For appearance, two style, no further comments. For uh, flavor, no fruity esters, perhaps raise fermentation temps. I do like it when judges suggest that I change a thing about my brewing practices, knowing nothing about how I actually made the beer, because I fermented this at about 82 degrees. Um, I think what might actually be a better solution in my case would be pitching less yeast to increase a little bit more ester activity, or fermenting in a different kind of fermenter. I did do this in a conical. So overall feedback, right grain bill, that's good, but lack of esters make it out of style. That is noted, um, and when I do taste this beer, it is definitely a complaint that I have myself, so I definitely agree with him. 
Next one says between three and four stars out of five. Um, subdued aroma, overall slight sulfur. That's concerning. Uh, our appearance was settled, settles to a medium head with tiny bubbles and some lacing. Flavor, overall good. Could use more balance towards malt and yeast for a more complex flavor. Overall feedback was a very good beer. Slight alcohol, slight husky grassy astringency. Could use more malt and yeast character for style. Useful comments all around. We'll discuss more of this when I actually release the Belgian Dark Strong Ale video somewhere towards the fall. Now for the beer that made this all worth it, the beer that won the bronze medal in the Irish Stout category. Keep in mind though that the Belgian Strong Ale category is one of the most competitive categories in the entire competition year after year. It sees one of the highest levels of submissions across all categories uh, year after year. So even though my beers didn't really get all that far in that category and I had some pretty critical feedback on some of those, I'm very happy with it regardless because I know these judges really do have to be uh, very, very stringent with their actual results here because it is so competitive. Again, you only get feedback from the first rounds on uh, each of these and this is a totally separate set of judges. Most of the Belgian beers are actually judged by the same people, um, but this was judged by a totally separate ones. So we'll talk about this one here. The first sheet here is four out of five stars in the entire flight. We have Comments uh, saying there's, there's coffee, milk chocolate, dark cherry, and floral aromas, um, which is actually really interesting. I never picked up on any floral aroma from it, so it's kind of cool somebody else did. So for the appearance, no lacing or legs, thin film remains uh, at bubbles and edges. Uh, for the flavor overall, the balance is towards the malty side, and he says there's coffee, milk chocolate, and a very light palm fruit. Again, something that I would not be able to pick up on necessarily. Uh, overall feedback, a nice example. Make sure fermentation is complete and yeast pitch rate and health is good to avoid some fruit notes, but thanks. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Next for Judge 928. Uh, this one was rated four out of five stars. Comments, red cocoa. Lower coffee malts, light generic fruitiness. Uh, appearance, head fell a bit quickly. Flavor comments, could use more bitterness balance. Malts are sweet chocolate and don't dry out enough on finish. Overall feedback, generally fits the style. Malts are a bit husky and could use more bitterness to ensure they end up drier. I think that's what that says. Somehow still passed and ended up winning a bronze medal in the competition, which I'm super pumped about. Medal still in the mail, um, but it should be getting it sometime soon. I'll shoot an Instagram post out when it does actually end up here. So overall, my experience with the NHC submissions was overwhelmingly positive. So every single beer had some positives, had some negatives, had some useful feedback from a different palate, which is really good because these guys, they're not your friends, they're not gonna suck up to you when you give them your beer. You're gonna get honest feedback and they're also experts in their field. I have no idea how many beers they drank before getting to mine at any point during this time um, and whether or not that has an impact on it. I understand there are a lot of mixed feelings out there about competitions. But I think it's definitely worth it to get the feedback if you want to improve as a brewer, if you want to really nail down the particulars about individual styles um, and perfect some recipes you thought were really good, then there's definitely a good opportunity there uh, in any sort of competition. So some takeaways from this, I don't think I'm gonna bottle condition my beers when I send them next year. We're gonna do it all from the counter pressure bottle filler so there is consistent carbonation across the board. Um, the only reason why I did it for the Belgians is because there sometimes is that extra character you get from a re-fermentation in the bottle, but also you want that high level of carbonation, which apparently there wasn't in some cases. I'm gonna have to dig more into my process to figure that out. I don't know if you guys noticed anything in my process that might be an indicator uh, as to why some of the comments were the way they were, but if you did, I would appreciate hearing about it in the comments. It just goes to show that even though you might think a particular beer is absolutely incredible, like I did for my triple, not everybody does feel the same way. Um, and it is all up to the individual palate and up to the BJCP categories and you know, putting things at their mercy, of course. Um, but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Anyway guys, let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Did you submit to NHC this year? And if you did, how did it go? Did you win anything? Did you get good comments, bad comments? What do you think? 
Hey, if you want to support the channel, there's a number of ways to do so. Just check out that merchandise store down below for this t-shirt. You can get plenty of others there as well. There's also Patreon, there's Amazon store, there's the channel memberships, and if you feel so inclined, the super thanks button. All of that means quite a bit to me. Uh, if you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on not only Instagram, but also Facebook now as The Apartment Brewer. And uh, yeah, you'll see more freaking content there if you're curious about all of that. Regardless, guys, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. It does mean a lot that you are still here. Let's take this feedback, let's make better beer with it, and continue to improve as brewers. So, until the next one, cheers. Cheers.